And now, the survival show that once survived being attacked by a Weimariner during a recording. In this episode, your buddy, your pal, and former co-host, Jason, stops back by the show. He's going to tell us what he's been up to with those poor cows on his ranch. Howdy and welcome back to In the Rabbit Hole's Urban Survival Podcast. This is Season 8 and Episode 263. I'm your host, Aaron, and you are in the rabbit hole, safe and sound. A quick note before we get to it, we had an equipment failure during this recording and didn't know until it was too late. Uh, I had to use the backup audio, so it's going to not be the usual buttery smooth sounds you're used to. It's going to be a little rough, but we'll get through it. With that, let's get this season started. How the hell are you, sir? When was the last time I actually saw you? Like, in person. Like, not on the show. Like, in person, because I bang my microphone. Three months? Is it three months? Yeah. Kidding. Like, you just went on vacation. I didn't even know, I don't even know where you went. I don't know where I went. I didn't tell Th- anybody. This is what happens. Disappeared. This is exactly what happens, man. We went to Jamaica. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> I hate you. I'm so in need of a vacation. We, we, well, it, it, it wasn't that much of a vacation. It was actually uh, it was a wedding. <laughs> no, he, he goes to Jamaica. No, I wasn't vacation at all. Yeah, okay. It was a wedding, so there was, you know. All right, so it was a vacation. But it was were, the, were there shenanigans? There were some shenanigans. Yeah, it was a bunch of, you know. Yeah, vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Drunk Asian people, you know. <laughs> that, that sounds like a party and to me. Jamaica. Although we went out on a boat and everybody got sick, except me. But that was funny, too. So, I, I do not get seasick. How much can I cuss? <laughs> Let's keep it to a dull roar. Yeah, okay, okay. So, wow, this is crazy. So, season premiere, and yes. you, like, you and Jonathan have been doing baby stuff. So, y'all haven't been around. Man, regretfully, it, 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 I've become more of, a, of an observer uh-huh. uh, of the of the podcast um, than anything else. Like, I, I didn't even realize you started doing video. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I literally, you know, right when you said, hey, man, look, you know, I, I'm I'm gonna record a, a you know a, a spot. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Pop on the pop up on the website. And I'm like, dude, I need I need some downtime. <laughs> <laughs> I need, wow. I need some rest. I need some sleep. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, that yeah. that's not existent anymore. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to babies. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll we'll get there. Hopefully that'll maybe that'll be like the uh, the season finale <laughs> of, of of this season. So we'll see. Yeah, I'll bring them on. And be like, ha! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what? Okay, so we gotta. It's been a while, so let's yeah. catch people up. Cows, cattle. You've been doing <sighs> unmentionable things with cattle for a while now. Yeah, I mean, I, so, I've always been the food guy, you know. Right, right. So well, let's so, start here for everybody. Where, like, we went from bunnies and chickens to cows. How? Why? I, I had to pull a Jason and Aaron. Uh huh. You know, and and nothing is is. Nothing simple. Simple. No, 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 no nothing whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Of course, you know, I wanted to get into, you know, the most extreme, you know, high end, you know, this is what I want. So I got into Wagyu. Wagyu. Yeah. Yeah. And of course. Okay. I, well, okay so for people who aren't familiar, what is Wagyu and why is Wagyu? Like the, the, the best thing, thing to, to everyone's kind of semi familiar with Kobe beef. Right. Which is just a prefecture. Uh-huh. Um, think of county um, in Japan that you know these particular cows are from okay. so all this it, it's it, it's all wagyu beef okay wagyu just simply means japanese cow oh okay but most americans you have to like right yeah, the, the yeah, brand yeah. name they yes know is yes yes beef. yes okay. and of course you know i i've got all the chef connections and everything else so mm. i'm like okay i can direct sell all, all the restaurants i can you know direct sell all my friends and and so on and so forth and I'm all about, you know, where my beef comes from and 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 kind of got into the industry because I was more kind of interested in in all this marketing and everything else going on mm. behind it. And the whole grass fed phenomena thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Unless you know your farmer, uh-huh. um, what you're getting is KFAB, which is the feedlot cows. Uh-huh. Same stuff. Mm. Just they're not ta- putting they're not feeding them corn, they're feeding them grass pellets. Okay. You're getting the same thing. It tastes slightly different because it's grass versus You've corn. This. Yes. Okay. Of course I did. Yeah, you, you of course I did taste this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Like Jen asked me, what, how do you know what dog biscuits taste like? I'm like, don't ask any questions. <laughs> exactly. Make sure the dog we, it. We're kind of analytical that way. Right, right. So, we, you know, we've, we have to don't hack it till you try it. Kind of experience it. 
<laughs> well, working with, with Alvin, um, uh, it's a friend of mine from MasterChef, um, I got to experience a lot of the, what is called A5, which is the highest grade of Japanese beef. Okay. And this stuff basically looks white. It's so marbled that it's, it looks white. And to describe that from a non-developed palate perspective. So me, yeah. Butter. Butter. Beef flavored butter. Ooh. It's, it literally melts in your mouth because uh. the fat, the genetically Wagyu store fat kind of like a uh, salmon. Okay. Um, it's not the, the, it's the omega threes, not the omega sixes. Okay. Okay. So the, the melting point is much, much lower. You have to literally, you have to handle it differently and cook it differently and everything else mm. uh, because of all this. Otherwise you just melt out all of the fat and you get you ruined the piece of meat. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, I, I got into all that because you know, it's food. the best. Yeah. It's food. Yeah. And, um, have been running full steam with that, learning the business and, and finding out all this crazy marketing that all these companies are doing and it's all bs i come right back down to know your farmer buy direct from farmers mm. it's the only way you're going to know where your food comes from yeah there's there's a lot yeah. of, there's a lot of marketing in agriculture oh my god yeah I, I, you know as a normal consumer you don't realize that right and but when you finally get into it, especially from my perspective actually you know feeding the beef out and raising it from a calf and calving and so on and so forth mm. man it's wow it's different so is the taste of the meat actually can you taste okay night and day let, let me back it up not just not just wagyu in general but like store-bought wagyu versus your wagyu i'm doing more i'm not shooting for a vibe i'm shooting for the best tasting beef that you can get from an individual farmer producing his own stuff got it okay you know I, i'm you're not reading poetry and massaging yeah or, no no, no, no. I, I, I do. I'm all about recycling and, 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 you know, reusing stuff. And I'm going to the local breweries here, mm. not any of the big guys, um, and using and getting all their spent grains. I remember you telling me about that. And, that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, do they charge you for that or no, do they just give it? No, like, no. Here, get they, were, they were going to, okay. they were going to throw it away. Oh gosh. Okay. And, and uh, the guys that I get my pigs from, it's the same thing. I mean, they, they use the, the same brewers because mm. I can't possibly use enough of it. My God, they're producing so much of it. Mm. I'm actually using it as, as soil additives. Oh. I'm spreading it on the, on the ground huh. um, and, and letting it uh, um, come, kind of rejuvenate some mm -hmm. of my pastures. Yeah. Um, there's lots of nitrogen in it, hmm. um, tons and tons of protein. The deer love it. My God, the deer are all over the place. Mm. Um, bringing in all kinds of wildlife. It's, it, my grass is, is absolutely beautiful. Um, and I'm just reusing a byproduct that would normally go into the trash. That's awesome. And yeah. you're using it to rehab your land. And yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Stuff. All of our stuff that we originally started doing the, the farm about, man, yeah. I just took it and scaled it up a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so what, so how, how long have you been doing this now? I've actually forgotten. Gosh, you know, um, I started with my buddy's property, which is the property next door. Mm. Um, it's, and that's still three years now. Three, three years. years. Yeah. How many acres total? Uh, 56, and we're fixing to acquire another 40, another 60, yeah. which are uh, uh, adjacent properties to ours to expand it out. What has the wife thought about all this? Like, I've never actually asked you what, what, Ash, <sighs> what Ash thinks of all this. Is she tolerated? Or is oh, no, no, she she's very much somewhere. tolerates it because, well, because... <laughs> She eats my food and yeah. she gets to brag to all of her medical supply doctor friends yeah. or whatever. And she takes pictures on Facebook and shows off, be like, this is what I got for dinner. Uh -huh. um, she doesn't mind at all. Okay. Um, it, it's not a huge priority to her. To me, she looks at it like, oh, that's my husband's hobby. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it will pay for the ranch in the next year. Um, once I get it, the infrastructure kind of redone, it pays that, for itself. That was going to be my next question is from an economic standpoint, beyond just being a, a really cool hobby, how long does it take for you to actually... I'm a numbers nerd. Come on, right, I, you right, know, my, my, my background is business, yeah. you know, so... so... How long... So, what are the words? How long does it take you to become economically viable without the screwing around and, and mess ups, like if you went back and did it? 
So if I did this the right way originally, <laughs> that's that's the way I was looking to phrase it. You know, because yeah. I'm still putting in, I'm completely redoing all the infrastructure now. Yeah. Um, I would have bought instead of just covering my my ag exemption, which that's a property tax reduction. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like total, my my property taxes for the year are sixty bucks. Sixty bucks. <laughs> sixty bucks. I hate you die. Um, it, it's all it's it's all there. You just have to like you know geek out and learn right. all the yeah. ins and outs and the loopholes and everything else. Yeah. Um, most people just go and buy what we call pasture ornaments. So they go buy like a bunch of longhorns or something, and then and, or six longhorns just to get the ag exemption. Just to get the ag exemption, so that it reduces their, their carrying costs. Uh. Well, that doesn't generate much of a profit per se because you're just reducing your tax burden, right? Exactly. Which I mean, if that's your purpose, that's fine. But, and taxes can get kind of crazy. Yes, so, very yeah. much so. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm doing it from a, a standpoint of uh, I'm taking a hobby and monetizing it uh-huh. and making it pay for for itself Mm -hmm. so i can you know keep buying more land adjacent so on and so forth and i'm using the cows and to generate cash flow that can pay make those mortgage payments is there because because you are a numbers nerd Mm -hmm. is there a point at which it becomes personally profitable for you and you're like okay this is big enough like i have enough acres i have enough cows are you like i'm going all the way and uh, uh, and you never actually get the money back in. You're right, right, right. It. Yeah, like, you know, the, the IDRH farm with the buddies. Right? You know? <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> it was a fun experience. We got to hang out. Yes. I would, you know, I would, I would never trade that experience. No, that, no. that was... That was a blast. We have stories. Oh, yes. my God, do we have yes. stories? Yes. And, and and it's funny. I'll be out of the ranch all by myself, you know, for a couple of days. And one of the main mottos that keeps ringing, I mean, echoing inside my head... Uh. Farming ain't easy. Farming ain't easy. Yeah, that was going to be wow. my next question. <laughs> so where we left off last time, it was that was the big thing. Is farming ain't easy? It's a lot of work. But is has this project, you know, from what you thought it was going to be till now, has doing cattle on this scale? I mean, we're not talking about a, you know massive scale, no, anything, but it's very, still it's like these are big freaking animals that yeah. need lots of acreage yes. and everything. Yes. Everything is much much bigger. Yes. How much harder is doing this than you originally thought it was going to be? There's theory and right. then there's reality. Right. And that, that's something that we've harped on for a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially when we used to do talk about the, the farm. It was like, oh, there's what the book said. And then there's reality. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's what the book meant. I thought it meant. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, there, now yeah. that we've wiped out a dozen animals, <laughs> now we can get it right. All yeah, right. exactly. That's. That rolls back to your original question of you know, kind of like the scale and, 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 and how you do it and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Now that I'm this far into it, I would have so done it differently. I would have bought steers and raised up those steers mm. because that would, it would have given me my tax write off, but it would have given me my cash flow. Okay. Because steers, of course, are castrated bulls. Mm. And those are the ones that you feed out to mm. turn around and sell as beef. So, how did you do it? I. We bought the minimum amount of cows, mm. which were all heifers. Mm. That, so that's first year they've never had a cow. And this then leads to the story of you driving through Texas with bull semen in your car. Yes. <laughs> Jason, what are you doing? I'm driving across Texas, bull semen in my truck. I'm so terrified to ask, but I got to know. Why? What are you doing? You know, from, from you know, cause we're urban guys. We're from the city, right? Right. Yeah, country guys, it's like, oh, it's the, you know, it's, that's normal. It's, it's yeah, oh, you're AI and your cows. Oh, I should around with bulls. Nothing. Yeah. Bulls even. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I was cutting you, calling you. Because you, uh-huh. you were the only one that I knew of that would actually appreciate the humor in it. Uh huh. I'm like, bull. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I got cooler on it. <laughs> Whole doer, liquid nitrogen in my backseat. <laughs> Disturbing, disturbing. Which you know, I, that's a big turkey baster. I'm guessing had to be. Yes, yeah, yes. We can, we can stop. Oh, the the visuals on that. I yeah, the no, vet. The no, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, those are long gloves. Yeah, I remember, oh yeah, to the shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> I remember them from dealing with horses. I mean, you don't stick your hand up a horse's butt quite as often as you seem to do with cows. Yeah, but. which is like all the time. <laughs> Luckily, they. Well, hi, D- baby Daisy girl. wants to make a guest appearance. I know, I know. Uh huh. The tactical Weimariner. In hindsight, I, I would have, I would have started with two full-blooded wagyu. Okay. Um, full bloods are, are 
Um, they're pure Wagyu from the original stock that came over in the 90s. Okay. Um, they're, you can, what they call flush, um, is you basically give them hormones that make them produce more, you know, drop more eggs. Okay. You can flush that and have those frozen and oh. then turn around and sell those. Oh. Um, so they're, they're multiple cash flow mm. generating ability uh, on top of being able to produce a calf. Okay. Use the steers as cash flow. Take those two um, heifers or those two cows, flush those, get, buy some cheap five hundred dollar BS cows, mm. inseminate those with those full blooded wagyu um, mm-hmm. embryo mm-hmm. inseminated with mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. that have been You're inseminated. You're not wasting so your expensive cows on bingo being baby machines. Bingo, because you can lose a cow. You can you, you know it's dangerous having a baby. Mm. Everyone knows that. Mm. Um, Cows aren't particularly well-designed creatures as far as being wild and doing stuff. I, I, I have to disagree with you on that. Really? Because we have Longhorn. We have a Longhorn. Well, okay, Longhorn is different. Like, from what I understand, Longhorn is like the one the one cow or that if the world went to crap tomorrow... They'd still be around. They're they like cockroaches. Everybody else is dead. Yes. Everything else is dead, but but Longhorns will be... And they, they do okay with coyotes, right? Like... They, we don't have donkeys because we have longhorns. Okay. All right. Apparently, um, I found out recently zebras can also do really well with donkeys. So, you know, a yeah. little, little something for the kids. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, think about yeah. a zebra or two. Uh, that's a thought. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Casually, you can have a little, you know, petting zoo going on out there and where you are. <laughs> so, okay. So, it's a completely different system where it is much more focused on being self-sustaining financially from the get-go rather than we're going to do it the long way, which is we're going to go get the heifers, we're going to go get the semen, we're going to drive the semen around, and then we're going <clears> to, <throat> with the <laughs> and then and then from there. Luckily, we can outsource that. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Because you and Scooter and, and mm, gloves, yeah, and, and I'm like, yeah, wow, that's, yeah. that's there's, yeah, shenanigans and a bottle of scotch or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No tequila, because we say you know, what happens with tequila and cows. So... Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> what, what, what are some other things that are more difficult than you thought they were going to be? Yeah, it, it, actually, some things are a lot easier. Um, like, oh, that's see, that's interesting. Like, yeah, I, well, pastures, grass grows. Yeah, that's I hear grass. Yeah, um, grass grows. My my it, yard man loves it, that grass grows. If you don't have one of these like real high end, premium, one type of grass pastures you have actual native grass Mm. um they do well in drought they just in general grow you can beat the hell out of them and they just turn around they come right back the nature is a beautiful thing as far as evolution you know getting back to those longhorns case in point so that's interesting about the 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 monocropping with the grass is that Mm -hmm. Why would is it just better grass? Is it higher nutrient than than the native grasses that grow? A, A lot of those people are are into hay production. So when oh, you're okay. buying hay, you want a you know a consistent product. Mm-hmm. Um, you know you're you're basically selling hey this is this hay. So it's this particular grass which has these particular nutrient you know properties. This and I so get and so it. Forth. yeah. It's you're you're buying a real product. You're not right. You're not screwing around like when we used to buy food for the the rabbits. Right. Like, like okay, what kind of protein percentage do these pellets have? Exactly. And, you know, are we giving them alfalfa? Or are we giving them something else? Exactly. So that makes perfect sense. Okay. See, from from my standpoint, since uh, you know. Wagyu are are, are a, a grain fed. You know, they, you need to feed them in order to kind of get them to to produce that. Size. Yeah, well, not necessarily weight and size. Surprisingly, cows are very efficient at, on putting on weight uh-huh. and size just off grass. Okay. <laughs> Surprising that 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 completely shocked me because I thought they had to have all this other stuff. Right. They don't. Yeah. They will survive. Mm. Well, <laughs> surviving and being you know productive are two different things. If you get any decent amount of rain, and like I said, the grass will grow. It. All you have to do is have enough pasture mm. and move them often enough, and it becomes that whole rotational grazing thing. You know, of course, you know, we read, I read all the stuff, got all the <laughs> theories, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Uh, and then we had pastures go down because we had old fencing, right? right. So we had to go in there and patch up fencing and so on and so forth. So we had to keep them in just in this one pasture. Mm. Well, they overgrazed it. Mm. So now there's nothing but weeds in there. But if you take them, and actually move them over here to this pasture, and then move them over here to this pasture just up, you know, a couple of weeks later, hmm. it's like cutting your lawn. 
So when and you cut your lawn. And you're fertilizing it at the same time. Bingo. Okay. So all of that, in theory, I was you know, reading all the, and doing all this research and everything else. You, you would think it was that complicated. It's not. It's just move from one pasture to the next and do it on time. Yep. And, and it's nature. Look at the, the, the savannas in Africa, mm. you know, all the, the herding, you know, the large herds of animals. That's exactly how they eat. Okay. And that's what keeps that entire environment, that e- ecosystem going mm. is because they come in there, they take the tops off of, of everything. They don't eat it all the way down to, yeah, to the ground and kill it. It's like goats are bad about that. Like yes. they'll take everything. Yes. Else, but cows. Yes. Sheep. Yes. Yeah. But cows just nibble across the top. Okay. Yeah. That, that actually turned out a lot easier. Um, hard things. Predators, so, flies. Well, flies are freaking annoying. But oh god, the flies are just. So uh, with horses, we used to always have to like hose them all down with with fly spray. Mm-hmm. But with the cows, do you care about that? Do you do that? You, you do because I mean, I'm, I'm even though I'm going to eat these animals, you know, a lot of well, them. You, it was the same thing with the IG race form. You want to give them the best life possible. You don't bingo. want to be a dick. Bingo. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay. And, you and horse... have this in the wild, but I can do it for you. Yeah. I'm a human. I got a brain. I can do that. That's like sticking your friend out in the middle of the woods and not giving him any off. That was only <laughs> once, and you were really drunk. <laughs> Hadn't thought it in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you you want to take care of the animals and give them the best life. I mean, you're right. you're saying that, right. so I mean, you, you want to give them <laughs> some off spray so they're not eaten alive. Yeah, it should be hell the next day for a laugh. Um, it, it's you're just taking. I mean, you, you try not to name it. them. Right. You know, we learned that lesson with the bunnies, and it's already happened once. Yeah, I rescued a bull and brought him home to the suburban backyard. Wait, HOA went nuts. Wait, I told him. Eh. Um, you have a bull in your backyard now? Yeah. Well, no, not now. Okay. I finally took him back out to the ranch. Oh, okay. But the, his mom rejected him. Uh, he was going to sit there and starve and die. Uh, you know, financially made no sense whatsoever what I did. But right, we're big bleeding hearts, so we would. I literally so picked up. Like, I'm going to eat you, but I, I'm in the meantime. I'm right? I'm really good to you. I literally picked him up. He was too small to even put in. I could have put him in a dog kennel. Huh. I put him in my back seat of the truck. Huh. Drove him from way up there in Brenham all the way to you know all the way down to my house huh. and put him in my backyard. Bottle fed him until he until he was jumping over the baby gates, which of course that's what I was using as a corral panel. <laughs> hey, hey, hey good with what you got, you know. Hey, it, it worked work. for when he was little. Yeah. But you know the kids got a kick out of it, mm. um, and, and bottle feeding him was was fun, mm. and it's paid off in the fact that now I have a what we call a um, a cover bull, which is like kind of a backup bull. So if you AI a, a cow, you've got a bull in pasture that will AI not artificial intelligence, artificial insemination. insemination yes, just making sure the audience. Yes, 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 yes. Um, sorry about that. Um, he makes sure that everyone gets pregnant kind of thing. Got it, got it. And he's, he's the fluffer, the cow yes, fluffer. Yes, he is. That is exactly cow what he is. Fluffer. He is the cow fluffer. Okay. And uh, because he was hand-raised by me, he is a dog. Uh-huh. Literally, he's a dog. Uh-huh. Um, he comes up to me, you know, he hears my truck. He he comes running up to the gate, say hi to me, runs up, wants to be petted, um, calls, you know, comes when he's called, you know, he's got a name, Notch, from when his mom petted it is ear in half. Got it. Um, he's actually the perfect bull to have because, of course, bulls are bulls, and they usually become kind of aggressive and mm-hmm. a pain in the butt to handle. Yeah. yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, he's on the smaller side because he was bottle fed, mm. and he is dog tame. He's like the perfect one to have for us because we have crappy fencing. <laughs> we'll get to that fix in a moment. Yeah, I was going to say. So what? Like from an economic standpoint, if you had done the things that we were talking about earlier and with things being easier than you thought they would, like you're able to get that, what is it, brewer's grain? Is that what they mm-hmm. call it? Spent grains. Yeah. Spent brewer's, grains. brewer's sprint. Spent you're grains. able to get the, the spent spent brewer's grain. Um, the, the grass feeding is a lot easier than you thought it was going to be. Had you done other things correctly in the way that you were talking about, how long do you think it would have? taking you to be financially productive and well, within two years okay. i mean it, it, it's really not that difficult um once you kind of get started yeah and you've got a way to 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 reproduce your own cows mm. it, it's really not that difficult okay. surprisingly what kind of financial um, burden though are we um 
it's not cheap to get started. Yeah. But it, it does. I mean, num- number one, you're producing your own food. And hey, come on, having your own steak that you know exactly where it came from, that's pretty good. That's and, good and stuff. I've had your steak once. It was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty spectacular. It was, I was like, wow, okay. And that, that wasn't even, that number one, that wasn't even Wagyu. That yeah. was one of the, the brangest, one of the original, mm. you know, cows that we had. And uh, it, it wasn't even properly, per se, finished out the way that, that I would do it now. Mm. And that's what it tasted like. Huh. Yeah. That's impressive. So the fence. Because I was there for the, the first few strands of barbed wire, and after that I was like, I'll let it go. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done being attacked by barbed wire. And, of course, our two fool asses were, were out there in the middle of the country, like on YouTube, <laughs> looking at, how do you, this, this is not, this, this barbed wire thing the guy told us is not working. We're on YouTube, and I'm like, oh, I found a video. I yes. found a video. We're out there watching YouTube videos to figure out how to put barbed wire in. Thank God for and having good got, self-service, man. Oh, yeah. And then got bit like a half dozen times, and I was like, "I love you, bro, but I ain't doing this anymore." It was like what seventy five yards, fifty yeah, yards, was bo- nothing, fifty yards of barbed wire. And nothing, I'm man. I'm done. I'm going yeah. back to bunnies. They're soft and cuddly, right? Um, digging fence posts. Um, there's a reason why I've invested into a skid steer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it we hit, we hit like a sandstone about two feet in, uh. and just because I'm I'm overly anal you know anal huh. and want to do everything kind of over engineered well yeah no surprise that's one of the reasons um it, it's it's rough trying to bust the rock and trying to get your holes deep enough yeah um that you know i've got to contend with predators we've got a lot of coyotes out there so are the coyotes really a problem with the cows not per se with the longhorns okay. um because they're so aggressive that, that's actually i have a dog now that i that's a side story uh-huh. um, that I found out, out out there, and and he almost died the minute that I, he became my little buddy because he thought he could go over there and push, you know, show the Longhorns who who was boss, and <laughs> the Longhorns had a different idea. Yeah. Like you look and, like a coyote, I'm going to attack you. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It, it was it was if I didn't know them so well, it would have scared me because uh-huh. they came full full blast, charging down the pasture, heads down, and. Beto, our our big longhorn, you were talking six foot, you know, horn span. Yeah, Long. and she she would would have skewered him. I uh, mean, he he luckily darted underneath the barbed wire fence and not, and ran through a hot wire, um, running from him. You know, and I was I looked at him and was like, I tried to warn you, buddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, there's one way you're gonna learn. Yeah, that, it gave me a lot of a, a sense of security. You know, mm. out, out there. Um, knowing that they were out there and that they're that aggressive towards uh, uh, predators out mm-hmm. there. Um, so, so but are the coyotes a, a problem for other? Very much so. Uh, of course, we have a ton of does out there. And so there's been a lot of fawns. And there's also been much less fawns here lately. Mm. And I've run across fawn carcasses. body parts. No, not carcasses. Just, just body little parts. body parts. Oh, okay. And what, I mean, it's very common knowledge. I mean, you know, the coyotes will come in during flying season and clean out as, because mm. they're, they're easy pickings. Mm-hmm. So it, that's more of my concern than anything else. With okay. the cows, newborns, yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll target a newborn calf. Mm. Um, you know, we've got certain precautions in there, but, you know, that loss to me, just particularly right now starting out, mm. that one loss of that calf it would be a huge, huge loss. For yeah, me. yeah, at the states that you're at. Yes. Just in general, those are expensive animals. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, both, both in what you pay and then also in what you lose out on opportunity cost-wise. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, and it takes so long to – the one thing I've learned with the cows is you're talking about a year-long process before you come to the, to the next mm-hmm. next step. So it's it's everything is a is a much longer time timeline mm. than what you would normally think. A lot, a lot can go wrong in that timeline. Yes, yes, yeah. a whole lot. And so what do you, you do? Take about precautions. The Geeking out, starting reading books, oh, YouTubing, of, of course. course. Um, YouTube the hell out of it. Uh, is it really I, that much? I mean, YouTube has everything now, but is there really that much on YouTube about surprise taking yes. care of coyotes? Yes. Well, we found. Instructional videos on barbed wire, so I mean, I case in I, point, I can't make too much. Um, yeah. I, I have started setting some traps, and and uh, I'm I'm putting up predator fencing. That's part of the the my fencing project right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I'm cutting my own posts because I've got I've got some cedars that I want to clear out. 
Um, so I'm using that as as my post and using the money that I'm saving by doing that. Mm. Um, I'm actually putting up predator fencing, which is basically like woven wire. So think of a wire net. Okay. And it, it prevents them from just stepping through it like a bob wire. They just kind of walk over mm-hmm. it. Um, this stuff gives them an actual physical barrier that they can't cross. Even, you know, the coyotes can jump, but when you have bob wire at the top, they can't if they decided to try to take a leap up at, at them, they'll end up getting caught in the barber up top. Okay. It's not like a deer that has that much of a vertical. Mm-hmm. Um, or a crazy wine rider. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm using that and then I'll probably put in some electric fencing maybe. Mm-hmm. And then I'm starting to set traps. Um, I've got a nice wooded area down by my Creek, Creek bottom. And I've got all that fenced off. Um, it's called a riparian fence. Um, so it's all kind of a watershed area. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, USDA is providing you know, the, a grant for that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's part of their conservation program, and they're they're encouraging ranchers and farmers to be more land stewards. And, and, and so, what are they trying to promote the conservation of, like getting rid of coyotes? <clears throat> no, no, no. What, uh, what actually, does the fence do for them? The fence keeps basically the cows out of a watershed area. Ah, okay. So you're protecting a watershed, so you're preventing uh, contaminants. Contam- you know, you're cutting down on contaminants. You're actually building in a filtration system. Hmm. So you know, all of the runoff coming off the hills, going into into this creek or, or this runoff area, hmm. is actually filtered out through this veg- vegetation line. Mm, oh, because the cows are not able to get in there. Bingo. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, yes. Okay, that's really interesting. And it's it also promotes wildlife because you know you're bringing your natural habitat. Yeah, yeah. you're bringing natural yeah. habitat and you're encouraging it. Mm-hmm. So you're 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 going in and you're putting in food food plots and and all these other things um, to encourage them to come in. So you've got all this wildlife and everything else, and of course the the government gives you a discount for that. Mm. So you you get uh, an, an, uh, an actually a, an extra discount as far as your property taxes go by having a wildlife exemption. I knew somebody else that had that. I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah, it's, I didn't know you could do it in conjunction with an ag exemption. Yeah, you, yeah, you can. Huh. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating stuff once you get into it. Uh-huh. Um, and you've really <clears> been like the business of of ranching to an interesting place. I had to geek out a nerd on it. Come well, on. yeah, <laughs> but I'm just, uh, that's really cool. Like to get that deep into it and to actually go, okay, there are these different things where I can get a grant or I can get an exemption and really make the money makes it. I mean, you kind of have to at the, at the scale of, of an expense of what you're talking about with cows yes. and land. Cause I mean, you're not talking about a cow on an acre. You're talking right. about a bunch well, of yeah. cows on I lots mean, of acreage and buy more land. Our original purpose with the ITRH farm was you know, food production, right? you know, and, and kind of bringing that whole urban farming, you know, mm-hmm. thing going, you know, around. And what we kind of just, you know, found out was number one, it's just a lot more difficult than we thought. Yes. And two, I mean, in an urban setting, you have limitations. Mm-hmm. Very you know, severe limitations. And I've always been about supporting your local farmers and knowing where your food comes from and everything mm-hmm. else. So that's, that was my extra motivation to, to, to take the risk and, put that kind of financial investment into getting into it. Because right, if you don't have family land mm-hmm. or inherited a bunch of land, it's really expensive to start farming. Yeah, because you're talking about, as we were talking about a little bit before, about a un, sort of unrelated topic, you're talking 10 to 20 grand per acre, yeah. at least in, in the area that we're talking about, a cheaper, you know, your, your mileage may vary, but 10 to 20 grand per acre, and you need how many acres per cow? You need, in my area, it's, it's called, it's, it's, Animal units. Okay. So it's it's how many animal pairs, basically, like one one bull or a, a cow and a calf. Okay. Um, is one unit for cows. Um, how many acres will support that one animal year round? Right. So so it it varies on your quality of grass and so on and so forth. That kind of gets back to the pastures thing. Oh wow, this gets complicated. Yes. Um, since I have nat- uh, native pastures, I can't. My my pastures won't supports as many units right it's the the grass we're talking about isn't as dense in nutrition kind of what we were talking about bingo yeah exactly it rolls right back to to that right um so right i'm looking at roughly three acres per per unit okay all right so i mean right there you're talking two cows three acres plus the cost of cows yes yes and you you have to buy them young so you've got the, the holding costs as well 
you have it. So you have about a year, nine months to a year of mm-hmm. for you can you breed them and yep. just pooping and yep. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. that's a big that's a big commitment. Huge, and it's a big financial thing to bite off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And I know you and you and Scooter have done quite a lot to try to figure out the numbers because Scooter's pretty much numbers geek too. Yes, yes. So that's <laughs> that's why we work. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's an interesting pairing. What? So you have had to do like barn stuff and fit. Well, let, let's finish off with the fence. So the fence yeah. is interesting. I thought it was interesting about the cedar because when you were like, you're cutting the cedar and stuff, I was like, oh yeah, you know, I've been out there a lot and it's really, these really cool fences. And I just assume everybody was cutting up their own cedar <laughs> to do this. It was like very smart, this renewable resource. And you're just using the, the, the timber that's already there. And then you're like, no, that's no, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're buying it. Yes. And they're also buying it with the bark on for the look. And I was like, well, maybe if you want a ranch, I mean, you want it to look like a ranch. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's you nostalgic. Don't look, you don't, you don't want it to look like something out of the Bauhaus. Right. Or something. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's it's the nostalgia of it. It's yeah. the classic, you know. That, that's a classic Texas barbed wire fence. Is, right. You know, a bunch of cedar posts. Cedar was a barbed wire, wire. You know. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people want to keep that kind of look. Mm. It's a lot of work. Yeah, setting fence posts is a lot of work. But yeah, cutting done, is a lot of work yeah, too. Not even just setting fence posts, just cutting posts, cutting it down, cutting it to size. Yeah, uh, I've got some serious hours on my chainsaw. Okay. Like I've become uh, an urban. Lumberjack, thank you very much. <laughs> Threw the beard out and everything, man. It's good did, to kind of fit that, it. Did that also take some YouTube videos? Yes, it did. Yes. yes. It's chainsaws. Yeah. It's, yeah. And, and the Hot dog is cool. back. I don't think people realize this is totally a, a, a side jaunt rabbit hole. Uh, I don't think most people realize how complicated and one, how dangerous and two, how complicated and how much maintenance and just dealing with a chainsaw period on any sort of scale. Is, oh, yeah. It's serious. I went to that one, uh, it was, it wasn't a CERT class, but it was something and it was some, some way affiliated with CERT and it was, uh, they messed it up. It was a whole day thing on, yeah, it was a whole day thing on using chainsaws after to basically clean up trees and stuff after Mm -hmm. disaster and dealing with it. And it was cool because they brought somebody in from Texas forestry who that's the guy's job is dealing with. Trees and and, yeah. and dealing with that stuff, and he's he's I guess a lumberjack when uh, when he's not doing that. But he got there and he's like, oh yeah, they have this listed as a day long course. He's like, no, this is a two day long course. And it was I was there for most of the day, and we hadn't even gotten to the part where we were turning on chainsaws yet. And you think that sounds stupid? How can you not get to the point? No, it was like really no, keep going. We don't need to pick up the chainsaw yet because we still haven't fully finished talking about how to properly fell a tree right you know and then they're servicing the chain and all this other stuff and you're like, just keeping that thing running yes just keeping it running oh my right. god and you're like oh my god I didn't think, just a chainsaw yeah. like how hard could this be yeah yeah you know, if you're just cutting a little few things here and there whatever in the yard big eh, big deal but right just cutting trees down and really going after no no yeah. Readjusting that thing constantly. Oh. And yeah. So you have- every 20, 30 minutes, you're having to go yes. back in there and, and, and retighten, you know, uh, unloosen the bar, retighten the chain. Yeah. Make sure everything is, is running, you know, is properly aligned. And then you have to go back in there and check all your fluids because you're constantly running through just oil for the, for the actual, uh, you know, ac- actual chainsaw. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and it's the oiling of the chain, you know, the actual right. bit itself. Um, Constant learning how to sharpen because mm-hmm. you will. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I generally have at least three spares on me every time I go out, hmm. because I will generally go through at least two every every day that I'm out there, hmm. just because you're going through. I mean, you're and you're going through what you know live wood, so you've got all the sap and, yeah, and the dirt. You don't want to have to stop constantly and sharpen it, but yes. you do. So you want enough to be able to do that. Yes. and you got to take them back and resharpen them. Yeah. Wow, that's man. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Yeah, the, the the whole books and the theory thing. Yeah, yeah. Then there's reality, and you're yeah. like, oh, this is a lot more. Yeah, it's like when somebody asks me, "How long does it take to make a podcast?" I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that little thirty minute blip. Yeah, that was about three hours. Three hours. Yeah. On a good day. See, case in point. On case a good in point. day. Yeah. So that's <laughs> that's interesting. And we didn't even talk about that before. About the chainsaw <laughs> thing. Of course, we you know it's the name of the show, the rabbit hole. So oh, random, crazy. random. That's that's interesting, but you're so that's why most people are not out there. Oh yeah, they're doing store bots. Oh yeah, okay. most people aren't willing to do that kind of crazy work, and there it's a lot of freaking work. It, it is a lot of work. 
and yeah. because I'm all about, you know, reusable resources right. and using what I have on hand, because that's kind of like the prepper mentality of, all right, man, what do you got? Yeah. So what can you use to keep yourself alive? Yeah. All right. So what do I have on this piece of dirt where I can turn it into this, you know, money, you know, at least break even, right. you know, production uh, of, uh, of a working ranch with the materials that I've got on hand. Yeah. You know, so it's like, okay, I've got cedars. Well, I need to clear those out because it gives, it takes up light mm. um, in the wooded areas and keeps, you know, grass from growing. Mm. So you want to take those out so you can increase your, your, your grass growth because mm. that's just a food for your cows. Mm. So it's, so it was all about using what I had on hand and, and what I could utilize to, to save some money here and there. And I'm, I'm basically doing all this on the weekends. Mm. You know, it's not like I'm out there for a week, at, you know, weeks on end. Mm. You know, I, I don't have, I've got a shed. Yeah. That's it. I thought y'all built like a big thing up there. Or was that on Scooter's? That's, that's, yeah, it's oh, okay. on Scooter's place. Yeah, he's got he's got a little a bunkhouse that he's building out. And, and he, you know, his property came with a barn. And he doesn't know. have a wife and kids to, to wonder where he went. Bingo, yes. Right. Yeah. yeah, he's got a lot more um, free time than yes. I do. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, and a lot of people don't want to put that kind of effort in. No, and uh, to me, it's just second nature that you. This is what you got to do, and if, well, if that's the amount of work that you got to do to do it, get it done. Mm. Pull up your sleeves, put the gloves on, and have at it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's always been kind of our mentality. Which right. the the more I get in, out into normal society, you know, away from our little you know people don't, people don't sheltered think. little clique, um, yeah, people don't people think. aren't wired that way. No. Just not. And to some degree, I, I understand it. And there's plenty of things <clears throat> where both of us have spent more time and energy in a project than it really needed. Yeah, yeah, just a just a few projects. So, <laughs> but you, we, because you know we do things that way, that's our kind of our normal method of operation. Uh -huh. We've learned so much from all of that. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. It, and it all pays off at some point. Yes, I mean, where, where randomness all of a sudden. You know, that, that one little experience, I mean, uh, and it could be completely unrelated, completely, yeah. but it'll have some kind of, of, of relation somehow that we can use that knowledge that we gain from over engineering. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we'll take that one little bit and be able to transfer that into something else. It's, yeah. it's all about building up that knowledge base, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how you do it is getting your hands dirty and getting in there and. <laughs> 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 so. How much so we ran into the problem, we ran into an infrastructure problem mm -hmm. with with the I2H farm. Uh, it was mostly water mm -hmm. was was the big issue. And then there, there was the other issue of food production. Like if we're not able to get pellet for these rabbits. And I think we even we, we had this flirtation with a for a brief period of doing an aquaponic setup where we were doing duckweed and we were figuring out, could we turn the duckweed into pellet? And then we start looking at pellet machines are stupid expensive. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, it's an industrial piece of equipment used to make money. So I understand, mm -hmm. but it was like, wow, I didn't realize it was that expensive. <laughs> we're like trying to figure, can I use duckweed and can I do this? And the reality is trying to produce your own food and to become an island, to be self-sufficient in an urban environment, I mean, I don't know that it necessarily translates that much better into a rural environment, but in the situation we were in, it was like, forget it. Yeah. Like lights go out. Nope. Better eat all the bunnies right now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause so is it, is it conceivably any different in your rural experiment that you've got going on? I shouldn't call it. I, I, I found it vastly easier mm. because I'm in a natural environment. Mm -hmm. And nature is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Nature works. Uh, there is there is a reason why you know you, you talk about you you get into the, the the cycles of the seasons and why things go on at certain times of the year mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And once you kind of realize that and kind of get in tune with it, everything becomes a little easier. Mm -hmm. You know, the, our biggest hang up with in the urban instances because we weren't in a natural setting. Mm -hmm. we Everything were, was having to be brought in, yes. and made from scratch, yes. and dealt with. And, yeah. and is it feasible? You can get it to work. I mean, we sure. proved that. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. we we got it to work. Yeah, could we, you know, take it to that next level? That that was going to take a monumental effort and an investment. That was going to take a huge financial investment and at least another year or two because, like, the next step for us was to get into aquaponics. But the size of aquaponics we needed required so much water. We were going to have to do this insane rain catchment system. I mean, we had the roof space to do it. Mm -hmm. Like we had what were, we were going to able to we were able to harvest water off of, uh, say, 10,000 square feet of metal roof. Mm -hmm. So we, we didn't have a 
it, it, the problem was building the filtration was now we're using lots of 50 gallon drums to do the filtration and lots of IBC totes. I don't even remember how many totes that was. It was like eight totes or something yeah. like that yeah. to, to hold the water. And mm -hmm. then we haven't even started to act. Uh, we're not even at the point of the point where we actually have the IBCs caught and fill those and have the fish and everything else going. So, yeah, I mean, that would have been yeah, the, at the least another year, realistically, another two years in good in good instance and in good circumstances to try mm -hmm. to get that running and not to mention the cash outlay would have just in raw materials and everything else right to, to get it done so i mean it, from a survival standpoint i mean you're going to do whatever you need to do in order to survive right right from an experimental standpoint it was a point of kind of diminishing not necessarily diminishing returns oh no it was diminishing returns real fast <laughs> Well, I mean, we got to a level of being kind of like par, okay? So we're able to produce enough to feed, you know, a family of four, you know, in this little bitty area. Yeah. You know, but and able to, to take it to the next level in order to cover the rest. So the vegetable production, the being able to produce your own food for that, for that light, you know, those animals, you know, and being completely 100% self-contained and self-sustainable in an urban environment, taking it to that, that level mm. was... It was a huge. Learning. The feasibility of it was just. It went like this. Yeah. I mean, the learning curve was like this, and then we got to the you know got to about oh, I wouldn't say here. <laughs> a reasonably incline. A medium incline, <clears throat> and we went back to a steep incline. Yeah, back yeah. to a steep incline, and then it was you know to take it to to that uh, that next level was just. Oh God. Yeah. That was it was like looking huge. at you know at the peak of Kilimanjaro and going like, wow, that's a long walk. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, but can you do it? Got it done. Yeah. But. So what about mm. the cows? How much? It's easier. Like you're not having to deal with as much. It's stuff, uh, you know when I say it's easier, it's it's uh, it's a different kind of work. Mm. You know, so you know you, you're having to number one, you have to be comfortable around very large animals. Mm. Uh, and I, I do it in a very non-stressful way, um, just because I know that stress affects your the meat. Okay. So if you have a really stressed out animal, even even in the commercial sectors, mm. you know, a really stressed out animal when they butcher it, they call it a dark cutter. Hmm. So all the adrenaline and everything else, uh. it, it it really affects the meat, and it won't break down the meat so much as just kind of, it, it's just not good. Okay. Um, the it's much gamier, mm. um, and it's much tougher meat. Mm. It just it has a different kind of off flavor. Very low stressed. That's the how they the the poetry. Yeah, the poetry and the, the massages and the yeah. beer and all the other stuff. It, it's all about managing stress for the animals. Oh, okay. So for oh, like, that makes so much more sense now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Man, those people get bored on that island. They're reading poetry to <laughs> the cows. <laughs> yeah, no, here. no, it's all it's all about, you know, it, taking care of the animal and making okay. it less stressed, you know, less stressed and I get it now. You know, relaxed and la 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 and smelling the daisies and so on and so forth. Yeah. So what's the big dream here? Like where, where, blue sky, where, where are you taking this? What are you going to do with it? Um, Cause I know with the, with the farm, it was like, we had an idea and then we got to a stopping point. It was like, eh, this is where we're going to stop. This was my lesson learned that I'd learned from the farm. Okay. You can get to a self-sustainable point mm -hmm. fairly reasonably. Mm -hmm. I mean, not easily, just reasonably. Time effort. Yeah, you can do it. But to take it to that next level. Mm is a whole nother ball game. Mm -hmm. And the the amount of money that in, and investment that you have to do in order to take it to that level mm -hmm. is prohibitive. Right. I mean, you've really got, you've got to make it a full-time job. It's no mm -hmm. longer a hobby thing. It's no longer a, you know, oh, I care about the people around me, so I want to provide them with, with right. you know, so, natural beef so and I guess stuff the like that. The question is, is this always going to stay a hobby for you? Or are you working towards this is your this is your jam, this is your thing, you're gonna be I'm a prepper, rancher. sir. Well, the prepper versus versus you wanna be a cattle rancher full time are two different things. No, sir, I wanna have my bug out location paid for, sir. I uh, I can appreciate that. Okay. And that that was is my exact point of okay. doing all of this was to have a secured location out in an area where I could very easily, you know, be able to produce enough food for my community. Mm. Um, and everyone knows what that means, at least with us. Right. Um, you know, in those type of situations where, you know, all hell breaks loose, you know, we've got, I've got a, a setup where I can sustain 
a small number of people safely and on a long-term basis. How long is it going to take you to get there, you think? Um, I'm getting pretty close. Uh, once I get to the, inf- the basic infrastructure point where I've got the cash flow coming in to pay for the basic land, I'm coming back in and I'm doing my underground improvements. Okay. Um, and then building out a little shed on top, of course, to make it look mm, yeah. You know, opposite, of right. Um, it's, uh, I, I'm looking at about a three, three year plan. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, no, not at all. That's uh, not it, that bad. I, I'm having to do a lot of, <clears throat> with the cows in order to generate the, the cash flow that I'm expecting. I'm doing a lot of direct marketing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be selling direct my cows to the actual consumer because mm. the middlemen take a lot of the, uh, the chunk of that money. Mm. And I, I can produce a better product for my friends and, and, and family and be able to generate enough cash flow to pay for the the land and everything else and, and while eating like a freaking king. Yeah. <clears throat> to pay for my preps. Mm-hmm. About well, location. Awesome. well, dude, it's good to see you. Oh, man, it's excellent, man. I mean, I mean not even on the show. Like, <laughs> we'll see each other. I know we don't. We don't. Uh, yeah. You know, we've gotten older and we've gotten, you know, involved in our side projects. But you know, just like, you know, it was back in the day, we've known each other a long time. Long time. We won't. A long time. Yeah, a long time. Twenty something years. Yeah. 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 So I mean, even back in the day we'd we'd go up a little bit when my first marriage actually kind of went off a little bit. Yeah. But the minute I saw you, it was like, dude, we just picked up right where we left off. Yeah, we do that now. We yeah. still do that. We've still, always, done that. always done that. What well, that's cool. We're going to have to uh, have you on more often. Oh, to, I, I, to I have to, man. I have to. Now that the kids are a little bit older and things yes. have calmed down and you've gotten into a groove. Although I'm next, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Hey, you, at least you have me and John to kind of, you know, give you guidance. Right. You're not well, going I'm into so a blind My evil master plan was like, no, you two idiots do this <laughs> stuff first. Oh, you're going to have twins? Oh, let me get popcorn. This yeah. would be great. Yeah. Of course, you know, I couldn't do anything just, you know. No, no, no. You're going to be like, I'm going to have twins <laughs> and it's going to be plus another little girl. And, and, and I'm, I'm gonna have cows. It's gonna be great. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's see how this works out. Uh, but yeah, I've gotten to to. I've already learned a lot from the two watching the two of you. <laughs> and I think it's funny because y'all's y'all's approach to parenting and y'all's approach to a lot of things. And we're all such good friends, but then there are a lot of things about us that are very different. Yes. And to watch the different parenting styles going on has been entertaining. I mean, not drastically different, but different enough that it's funny. It's like, oh, this is this is Jonathan as a dad. Oh, this is Jason as a dad. Okay, well, it's turned out better than I thought. Nobody's yeah. died. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's all good. All right, brother. Man. All good. right. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to do all the YouTube stuff. Like this video, subscribe, and throw a poke at that bell because avocados are green. Show notes, resources, and other surprises can be found by going to in the rabbit hole.com slash E263. With that, we wrap up episode number 263 from the Lone Star State. Till next time, stay safe and sound. Now get off my lawn.